Hey guys, this here is a preamplifier board, but it's not made with transistors. As you can see, it's made out with vacuum tubes. And I've designed this PCB and then I've ordered it to PCB Way, and I've also ordered all the needed components in order to mount it. The tubes, the sockets, the resistors and capacitors, and so on. And in this video I want to show you how a vacuum tube works, and that will be quite interesting, so stick till the end. And then I want to explain you the difference between the preamp and the power amplifier, and why some people will choose to use vacuum tubes instead of transistors. And finally I want to show the circuit for this PCB, and how the preamplifier works, then we assemble it and test it out. Sounds interesting? So, let's get started. I've just received a few new PCBs from PCBWay, and this time I've ordered some new exotic colors as well. Look how nice they are with this shiny purple, but you could also select any of these colors here for the solder mask. And the silk layer is very good. The pads and the tracks are perfect and precise, so in overall, as always, I'm satisfied with my order from PCBWay. For only $5 you can get 5 PCBs for your prototypes, and all you have to do is to upload the Gerber files to their website, select the settings for the color, the thickness, and so on, and place the order. And in a few days you receive your awesome PCBs, so you can start making your project. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is my pre-amplifier PCB, made with vacuum tubes. And this here is a power audio amplifier based on the TDA IC. The basic difference between a preamp and a power amplifier goes like this. A preamp amplifies a weaker signal such as the output of an electric guitar or a microphone to line level, while the amplifier will amplify a line level signal so it can be sent to powerful speakers. This here for example is an electric microphone. It creates a very weak signal when exposed to sound. If we directly connect this weak signal to an amplifier, this would amplify both the signal and the noise, and since the audio signal is very weak, we would get very bad results. That's why first we need to elevate that weak signal to line level. For example, the microphone level is around minus 50 dBV but the line level is usually 0 dBV, or around 1 volt, something a smartphone would give or any other normal audio jack that we could amplify. I want my preamp to be based on vacuum tubes, but that doesn't mean that we can't have preamps based on transistors. For example, this one here is a microphone preamplifier that is made with transistors. This can be supplied at 5 volts, and once you connect the microphone, it will give out a line level signal. So why do people want a vacuum tube amplifier? Well, that's because for some people it seems that these tubes will make the music that we create to sound better, smoother, warmer and cleaner, and they also give the audio signal some nice harmonics. And by the way, we also have power amplifiers made with vacuum tubes, but these tend to be a lot bigger. Actually, I'm preparing such a project for a future video, and I already have the tubes, the transformers, and some other components that I need, and this is for only 20 watts. And to compare, the amplifier before has 50 watts for each channel, so a total of 100 watts, and this is 5 times smaller than the tube based amplifier of only 20 watts. And that's because with the micro technology we can make everything fit inside of just a few millimeters, and all we care about then is to keep the IC cool so they won't burn under high power. So let's check my PCB and then the schematic that I've prepared for today, also the part list, how the vacuum tube works for amplifying signals, and finally we assemble my PCB and test it. If you want to make the same PCB, download my Gerber files from below, and then you go to pcbway.com and click the code now button. And here we insert the size and the amount of PCBs that we want to order. Then you can select a color, and in my case I select the purple one because I think it looks amazing. I click save to cart and on the next page, I click the button and upload the Gerber files, and then I make the payment. And in a few days I receive my PCBs and they all look very good. My PCB has an AC input for supply, 
and on this other side we have the audio input and the audio output for the left and right channels. This is the schematic for the entire PCB and we can see those three inputs here. The AC supply is then connected to an on and off switch and that will go here on the PCB. This potentiometer has two channels and also a switch integrated, so we can use it to control the volume but also to turn the amplifier on and off. On the schematic we have these potentiometer connections here, here and here. Then on the PCB we can also see four diodes, followed by some capacitors and four transistors. And yes, yes, I know that I told you this amplifier is not based on transistors, and is not. Because we use these BJT transistors only for the voltage doubler part of the circuit. So let's go step by step. So the AC supply will be connected here on these LEDs, which will be below the tubes in order to make them glow. You can use any other color for these LEDs if you want. The AC supply is also connected on these heating filaments of the vacuum tubes, and in a moment I'll explain to you how that works. These heating filaments are connected on pins 3 and 4 of the tubes. This R1 resistor will limit the current that is going to the heaters. And then using these diodes, the capacitors and the BJT transistors, we make a voltage doubler, so getting this point as a reference, we can get out minus 28 and plus 28 volts. This voltage is then connected to the vacuum tubes. The audio signal input is connected to the potentiometer for volume control and then is connected to the tube for amplification. And that's it for the circuit of this PCB. I've tried to make it as compact as possible, but using tubes you can't really make this smaller than this. Ok, so before we assemble it, we must go over how a vacuum tube works and could amplify audio signals. You can get all sorts of vacuum tubes, but the ones that I'm using today are 6J1 and this is a pentode with 7 pins. So let's start with how a triode works and then we can understand the pentode. A triode is called triode because inside of the vacuum tube we have 3 elements. We don't count the heating filament as an element. So we have the cathode, a control grid, and then we have a plate. When we hit the filament, that will hit the cathode, which is usually connected to ground. When this metal is heating up, it will start bouncing electrons around it. At the same time we connect a positive voltage to the plate. Usually this is a high voltage of more than 50 volts. Since the electrons on the cathode have negative polarity, this will be attractive by the positive polarity on the plate, so they will start flowing in that direction, creating a current. But that's why we have this control grid. If we apply a negative signal to this grid, this negative polarity will repel the electrons in the other direction, so the current flow will get smaller and smaller or near to zero. But when we apply a positive, the electrons could flow towards the metal plate above. So this is actually as an amplifier, because with a small signal applied to the control grid, we can have a bigger current between the cathode and the plate above. Ok, so now we add another screen, so this time we have a tetrode. We apply a positive voltage to this, and because this grid is closer to the cathode, those negative electrons will be first attracted by this new grid so they are now accelerated even more. But when they get there, they will see this plate above that has a higher voltage and in that way they will continue to flow towards that metal plate, but now with more power. And like this, this tube will have a little bit more of gain. But this time the electrons are gaining so much kinetic energy that sometimes they will hit the top plate so hard that some electrons will bounce back and go to the screen plate. So like that we are losing some efficiency here. So that's why we have the pentode, with another screen grid, and that is called a suppressor grid. This is usually connected to ground or a lower voltage. So like this the electrons can't bounce back anymore, because they don't have enough energy and the suppressor grid will repel them back to the positive plate. 
So now we get even more gain. So that's pretty much how we amplify signals with a vacuum tube. Ok so now let's assemble my PCB. And if you want to make the same amplifier, you have my design and the components list below in the description. I will start by adding the input connectors. So first I solder the AC input jack. And remember this PCB will need 12 volts AC supply. It can run with DC. Then I also solder in place the audio input and the output connectors. Before we add the vacuum tube sockets, we need to solder some LEDs below. And this will glow through the tubes and like that we give them a cooler look. And now we can solder the vacuum tube sockets. We use this so we don't have to solder the tubes directly to the PCB. Then I also add the volume potentiometer and the on and off switch. I add the power resistor for the heating filaments of the tubes and this must be a power resistor of at least 2 watts. I add the rest of the small resistors. And finally I add the diodes and the BJT transistors and make sure that you don't solder them backwards. The last components to be soldered are the capacitors and in my case they are a little bit too big but they will still work. So now everything is soldered in place so let's test if it works. I add the tubes to their sockets. To supply the PCB I will use a 12V transformer that I have from some halogen lamps and this has no rectifier at the output so we have AC voltage of 12V and 4 amps. I connect this transformer at the AC input and we can see the blue LEDs below the tubes that are now glowing. Since the preamp doesn't have enough power I add my amplifier between the preamp and the speaker. And like this we can have a decent power but some soft harmonics as well and the effects of the tubes. I get my music from my smartphone. And the first thing that I've noticed is that once you turn it on, it will take a few seconds for the sound to start because the filaments inside of the tube must heat up. So take a look, I turn it on. And we have to wait and the volume will slowly go up. Ok so now let's hear the same song with the preamplifier and then without the preamplifier and let's see the differences. I don't know about you but I can really hear those harmonics as an echo after each sound peak. So the preamp works. So guys that's how I've made my own tube based preamplifier. So what do you think? It's quite interesting right? And it should give your music more harmonics and more smoother sound. You have all that you need to make this project below in the description. And if you like this video and you have learned something new, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, did you like this video? I hope so. Ok so look, I would really like to thank you to all of you for the support, especially for those who are supporting me on Patreon because that's a really nice thing to do. And if you can support me on Patreon, well all you can do is to just like my videos or comment below in order to get more activity on YouTube, that will really help me. And if not, you have all my links below for my shop, for my website, if you want to buy my t-shirts and so on. So thanks again and see you in the next video.